Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're just gonna work on some projects out here in the garden. I'm not sure what we're gonna exactly get to. I do know we're gonna start with some containers. I still have a few groups of containers. I wanna get some spring color in, just simple. I've got some snapdragons and violas and pansies, um, a couple lavender plants that I'd like to get in the pots. I've also got some that have perennials from last year that we need to clean up. So I'd like to get those kind of checked off the list. And then after that, I'm not sure. We might do some transplanting. I still have some things behind the Hartley. So I'm just going to bring you guys along for the afternoon. Now it got down to 30 degrees last night. Everything that we have outside is totally fine. I wasn't even stressed about it. Usually stuff that we've had out, even if it hasn't been down to freezing, uh, is fine. They're all cold tolerant things. The only time I really start to worry and think maybe I should tent a few things or cover a few things is if it gets down to like 28 or below. I don't see any of that on our forecast, so that's good. Everything should be fine out here. So far so good. What's going on over here? So apparently we are the house for all the cats now. We're calling this one Frosty. Benjamin calls it Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh boy. They gotta figure out their pecking order. <laughs> so this is where we're gonna start, kind of by where we park our vehicles. And you guys know that this a uh, random arbor and fence section that's just kind of sitting here on its own, that is going to go here pretty soon. And I'm going to be moving these containers, but wherever we move them to, I still want them to be pretty. And they've got like a sage, which is still a nice plant, but we need to clean it up a bit. The hookahs, we need to clean all of the outer leaves off of. They've got new growth in the center. In fact, I came along the other night just to see how well they did. Oh, there's ants in here. Do you see those? A whole bunch of ants, interesting. Anyway, um, yeah, they've got really nice new growth coming up. There are some variegated ivy, which I think I'm gonna cut back, but they are tough plants, so they'll flush back. But we'll have just enough room to pop some of those little pansies because they have such small root balls when they come out of six packs that we'll just clean up the perennials and add a tiny bit of spring color. Should be pretty easy. I'm also going to get this container. So we had dahlias in here that I grew from seed last year and they got missed. We forgot to, um, pull it in so I have no idea what's going on oh yeah they're they're rotten shoot yeah we meant to get these pulled just didn't so this right here you guys is what happens if they're subjected to too much cold squishy rotten tubers but just to give you an idea these were started from seed last spring and these are the tuber clumps that they form in one one season isn't that amazing Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to find any that survived. That's okay. We've got plenty of dahlias to deal with. I'm going to move this to the greenhouse, though, so that we can get something else planted in its place. I'm gathering up all my supplies. I have gathered nothing <laughs> thus far. In fact, the gator might be full of stuff that I need to, yeah, that I need to put away. Dang it. Uh-huh. So <laughs> this is from my project the other day. So I'm going to uh, empty this out. I save a lot of these containers to start seeds in. Um, anyway, I'm going to be using some land and sea and biotone in containers that uh, we're just topping up and reusing soil from last fall. Anyway, let me get that done quick so we can gather up some plants and start in. better so I had a broken bag of rose tone I'm just gonna use that up instead of opening a new bag of biotone okay so for these hookahs what I'm gonna do is just come in with my pruners and cut the dead leaves from the outside it's pretty easy they look so much better And then for this ivy, it doesn't look super great. This one doesn't really even have any pliable leaves on it. So I'm just gonna cut it off at soil level. If it comes back, great. If it doesn't, no big deal. 
And for the sage, you can see it's got a lot of nice leaves up top here, but it also has some fresh growth coming in down below. So I think I'm gonna cut off, like sacrifice this top growth so that we can let it reflush and the whole plant will look good. Because if I cleaned these stalks off, they would look pretty lanky and long because really only the top leaves are nice. See that? That's all we would be left with. So instead we're gonna go in and cut down to this nice new growth. Okay, this ivy looks a lot more promising. Hey, Russell. Hey, bud. Ooh, ants everywhere. Look at all those ants, buddy. Don't wreck my plant, though, dude. Don't wreck my plants. <laughs> and the other side. This sage looks a lot better. I might spend a little time and just clean this one up. What are you doing down here? Goodness, we, I think we've just disrupted an ant hill. Oh, well, I don't think they're hurting anything. Okay, since we have so many plants in this container that will, you know, grow and fill in, I'm not sure about all the ivies. This one for sure is nice. The sage are both nice and the hooker has all made it, which is awesome. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and just pop a bunch of these pansies in. And like I said, when they come out of a six pack, they're really easy to um, find space for because the root ball is just so small. So let's get some color in this pot. the second one so two out of the three hookahs have new growth this one over here isn't showing new growth I cut it back we'll see what happens oh I need to thread this back up in here kind of important perfect drip has been reinstalled and to refresh these pots took five six packs which cost $3.50 a piece so $17.50 refresh I think is really good I can't wait to see what kind of growth and color these put on especially once they're really accented by these hookahs that grow up a bit okay this is our next chore I think I can manage this by myself oh yeah yep let's get that in the gator So here's my plan. I'm gonna pull all of these old dahlias out and I'm gonna to top up the soil with uh, land and sea compost and a little bit of that rose tone that we have there in the buckets. And then I'm gonna plant the raspy berries that I picked up not long ago. These are a hybrid mix between a raspberry and a strawberry. So they grow like strawberries. Uh, the fruit looks like a strawberry, but they're supposed to have a really wonderful raspberry strawberry fusion flavor. I hadn't ever heard of that plant before, so I picked them up right away when I saw them. They've been sitting out here for a couple of weeks um, and I kind of knew I wanted to plant them in a galvanized tub. That's how my blueberries are planted out there. I might take them out there, but I'll probably plant them today and leave them up here in the raised bed garden for now. That's my plan. See how workable this soil still is? I planted these really late in the season. That's why I am reusing the soil. Oh, that feels good. Look at this. Mm, beautiful.
Okay, it's all done. I'm not gonna water it until I set it down at its spot so that it's not super heavy, but we recharged the soil with the compost and fertilizer, planted the raspy berries, which they grow about 10 inches tall and 12 inches wide. So while in the end, I'm gonna probably need to move them out into separate areas, I think they'll do really well in this container for this season and I've grown strawberries in galvanized tubs a lot throughout the years and they do really well. And then I set up the drip. So we've got the brown quarter inch drip line that has emitter holes every six inches and I think total, let me count how many emitter holes. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten emitter holes total. I think they emit like point, what was it? like half gallon. It's right around a half gallon per hour. So we won't need to run them for very long. And then I uh, coupled it into some just a uh, supply line. This is quarter inch black line with no emitter holes. And I just left, I always leave kind of a long tail so I can figure out where I want to tap it into. And there's drip all over in the raised bed garden. So depending on where we put it, we should have plenty of that. And these are a zone four. I don't know if I mentioned that, but they'll have big white flowers um, and they should produce through the season and they should survive even in this container. So let's take this over there. I think this will be a really good spot for them. They're gonna get sun all day long in this area and it really does fill in and get really pretty. So this uh, right here on this arbor, there's a colette rose, soft pink roses. And then I've got a clematis that I can't remember the name of. But if we look over, you can kind of see some new growth going. It's got dark purple bell-shaped blooms. And so it kind of crawls on the fence a bit. And then there's a limelight hydrangea. I've planted a few things in this flower bed, but not much because I was kind of anticipating a little bit of a flower bed change. I don't know, maybe we'll develop that further this year, but I got this all watered in and then you can see the drip. I'm going to attach it to this drip line right here. I gotta figure out how often it runs first before I do it, but I think that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so that's a couple projects checked off the list. I think the pots I wanna tackle next are the big groups of pots right in front of the greenhouse, which will be uh, a little bit intense. I don't plan on doing any really complicated combinations, I kind of want to do monos. So each pot has one type of plant in it. I think that might look restful since there's so many pots. I had thought about uh, dispersing these containers, which you know we may do later on, but they are all set up on drip already. So like I know that system works really well. We did the one plant, one plant per pot project in these last year. So we put one annual, one four inch annual per container, even in the large one, just to see what would happen. Aaron's always kind of pushed to do that kind of experiment because some of these plants like the Super Tunia Vistas, the Suncredibles, the Play in the Blue Salvia, those plants just get enormous. And every time I put them in combinations, like we just marvel at how big they are. And we just think, you know, they could stand on their own. And so he thought, it would be really fun in these containers to do that and it worked out really really well he was very pleased with the results and while I was a little skeptical in the beginning I was really pleased with the results as well we've got a little cleanup to do first I want to pop this sprinter out and pot it back up sprinter boxwood uh, there's a euphorbia that I'm gonna toss I'm gonna leave this boxwood this is a Mount Bruno boxwood and then I've got to toss this hypericum so St. John's Ward, they looked gorgeous in these pots. They're marginal in our area and they like more acidic soil than we have. So I kind of knew that they wouldn't survive. So I'll get rid of that. And then again, I did a refresh on the soil last fall. So I'm going to just top them up with compost again, add a little fertilizer in and plant them up. Now I did have hookeras, hookerellas, carex. Uh, there was a calamagratus ornamental grass in these from last fall as well. Those all were coming back and a friend was over and I told her she could take them all. If she wanted to try them in her garden, she's developing her garden as well. Uh, so she took them all and planted them there at her garden. So it'll be fun to see what they do. And that kind of helped me prep for this project today. So I just have a few to, to pop out.
Okay, so the soil has been refreshed and I went through each individual pot and I made sure that the drip was hooked up. So it's hooked up to the supply line in the back and I had to run new drip to quite a few of the containers because most of them had just been uh, plugged for the winter time. Because this quarter inch, it does plug with hard water pretty badly. This is what we had going last year, the setup. I won't do rings like this again. These are a total pain to work around. Uh, I'm going to just do it more like this where I come in with the supply line, I couple into the quarter inch drip, and then I just run a length of it with a plug on the end. And that way it's so much easier to manipulate around plants. We did this to test if it would work, like if it, the water flow would work better. And I don't think it helps with that at all. It just makes it a pain to plan, uh, plant around. Okay, so now we just need to gather up plants. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough. <laughs> To fill these and make them look the same on either side we'll see what happens but i do have yellow snapdragons blue pansies i've been doing a lot of blue and yellow this spring which has been really pretty um, and then i do have pink sea thrift and i've got a couple of honeyberry plants i planned on potting those up in terracotta pots and putting them out by the others in the cut flower garden but if i can use them up here to fill one of the containers i might just do that anyway let me get them all planted and then we'll take a look done and they turned out so sweet. Here is a backed up look so you can see all of them. Aren't they just so fresh and beautiful? Oh I love all the yellow and blue this spring so much. I did toss some pink in there though. So let's go through each one of these pots one at a time. Now they are identical on either side so we'll just walk through this side here. I do have a magnolia sitting here. That's a Bracken's Brown Beauty I think is the variety name. It's one that I don't see growing in our area. And I think I need to position it somewhere where it's a little more protected. So that's why it's still sitting here because I haven't decided yet. In the tallest urn, we've got a lavender called Platinum Blonde. It's variegated, beautiful creamy green with kind of the yellowish, creamy yellow uh, margins there. And then I just ringed that with blue pansies. I love to use pansies, violas, and lettuce in the spring because you can get them in six packs and they stretch really far. For pretty inexpensive. Next container down here we've got golden parade tulips. These came from some of the pots that I planted up last fall. We uh, watered them, popped them back behind the greenhouse. They lived back there until mm, it's been several weeks. We put them in the greenhouse to kind of force them into bloom so you can see that they are blooming already. Some of them are not and then surrounded that with pansies. Next container, we have cherry blossom stock. So this is a cool season annual. They smell like clove. In fact, I've had that flat sitting in the greenhouse. My mom brought me this flat. Spring tradition. Anyway, it's been scenting the entire greenhouse. It's wonderful. You can see our hard water is already spotting up the leaves, uh, but that will wear off because now we've got a drip system going so they won't get overhead water. Some plants just show it more than others. Uh, there's the boxwood that I just left alone. I did fertilize it. And then this container here, just yellow snapdragons. Very striking. They need to root in a little bit. They're a little floppy in their container. Here we go. I love the way those look so much. And then we've got a sensational lavender. Just one plant in that pot. You can see it's bloom stalks. It's going for it. They have been in the greenhouse for a while. So it is very much so ahead of what we've got going on outside, but they're a tough plant. So we should be okay with those. Right up here, we have a honey bunch 
Honeyberry. So I did end up putting the honeyberries in feeling like they were kind of perfect. See the blooms in there? They're kind of a yellowy color, so they go with this color scheme really beautifully. And um, they filled in this space, which was nice. They've got a really nice kind of soft leaf, really pretty green, and blue pansies. This pot right here, yellow snapdragons and blue pansies, repeat of flowers here. And then there's some, I can't remember what the variety name is, Armeria. Anyway, these should bloom pretty much all season long. I love kind of the, kind of like saxifrage. They have that really low kind of foliage canopy and then they send up the bloom stalks that look kind of like alliums. I had uh, a couple extra packs of pansies, so I popped some blue in there. I wasn't going to at first and I did that right at the very end. And then our last container, the littlest one down here, this was just a single gallon size viola. Filled it perfectly. And then over here, like I said, identical. I'll just kind of scan over them really quickly. The only thing I didn't do the same is I did not plant blue pan pansies on the back side of the top lavender over there because it's kind of a waste. Nobody's back there ever. So I didn't want to waste any flowers back there. Oh, so pretty. Now we did put together a video last spring of how we put together the drip system to all these containers. So for really detailed information, you can check that out, but I'll show you quick how I need to reconnect it because it's not quite done. So like I said earlier, all the pots, I made sure that they were all attached to this supply line right here. It's a half inch. It runs along the back side of each group of pots. And then there's a quarter inch supply line that runs underneath and up through the drain hole of basically all the pots except for this front one because I pulled it out for some reason last year, I can't remember. Anyway, each one of the pots has individual drip on the top, whether it's a single emitter like I put in the viola pot, I put a half gallon per hour emitter in there, or the quarter inch brown drip tubing. So then the supply line, we did a little trench. You can see it goes underneath the ground right there, kind of, just underneath the rocks right here so that nobody trips on it. And then it pops right back up on the other side and then runs the distance over here and then the same setup all of the supply lines connect into that and then run into each individual pot. So we had to cut the supply line last fall when we retrofitted the greenhouse uh, in order to heat it. So I need to set that back up. I'm not gonna do that today because I've kind of run out of time, uh, but I will show you what I'm gonna do. So see right there, it's cut. So I'm going to use a coupler, probably an elbow, and I'll put an elbow in there and then run another piece here. And then we're gonna dig a little hole underneath the frame of the greenhouse, which we may be able to see better from inside. Well, I don't know if we can see it easier. Well, maybe. See that metal piece right there? That's basically what we are gonna be dealing with. I'll move those wood plant holders. That's what we use them for. We'll move those out of the way and then I'll dig just a little trench underneath this metal piece, just enough to slide that pipe underneath in the corner, like as much as I can get it in the corner. And then it will cruise along the wall here to our setup. And this is our setup. It is such a cluster of pieces. Sometimes you just have to do that. So we have our hose with the splitter. This one goes to the hose I use to water the stuff in the greenhouse. And then this one um, has a timer on it. And then our configuration of pieces, which I went into detail on in the initial video. But right here is where it comes down to the part where I can put the half inch tubing right on this piece here. And then we set up a timer. We set the timer to run at a specific time each day. Uh, it works really well. And just in case you're curious, I've got a flat of fireball burning bushes right here and some boysenberries. So that is gonna do it for today's projects. I need to go clean out the gator now. Now I did fill up the containers quite full with soil, so you probably saw me removing some of it in order to accommodate root balls. Uh, with that soil, I go spread it out in the south garden. So that's where I'm gonna head. I will um, spread all of the extra soil that we have out there, uh, and then I'll just put away all my tools and everything, and then I've gotta go water. Wind always makes it to where you kinda of have to like check everything, even the things that are on drip, because drip isn't a 100% once and done. So I'll go do a walkthrough and make sure everything's working, but I'm really happy with what we got done today. I think, other than a couple more window boxes, I think that we have addressed almost every container, I think on the property, except for the ones I'm gonna skip. <laughs> like these, I'm not gonna plant those up for spring. The boxwoods look awesome, they're doing really well, and we'll plant them up for summer here and not too long. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself immensely. It's been a beautiful day. We'll see you in the next video, bye.